Good morning and welcome to today's soundbite. I'd like to start by reading some verses from Matthew's Gospel, starting at chapter 8 and verse 23. Jesus got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? they shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from them, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, If you drive us out, send us into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake, and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. The whole town went out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over and came to his own town some men brought him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier? To say your sins are forgiven, or to say get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, then he said to the paralytic, Get up, take your mat, and go home. And the man got up and went home. As we continue in lockdown, I'd like to offer some encouragement. I'd like to ask you to focus on Jesus, particularly his sovereignty, his kingdom and his glory. How would you describe your relationship with Jesus? Or put another way, how big is your Jesus? Do you keep him in a box and bring him out when you need him or when you feel like it? Does he fit nicely around your life or does your life fit around him, around what he wants and around what he's doing? Is he sovereign? The Lord's Prayer begins with the words, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Chapters 8 and 9 of Matthew's Gospel point to the restorative or restoring nature of that coming kingdom through Jesus' teaching and his healing ministry, where lepers are cleansed, the sick are healed, storms are stilled, those oppressed and broken by the powers of evil are restored, the blind are given sight, even the dead are raised to life. When Jesus returns, all things will be restored, not just humanity, but the whole created order. Until then, his kingdom should rule in our hearts and be evident in our lives. At the start of chapter 9 in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus highlights our greatest problem, sin. 
instead of healing the paralyzed man, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Forgiveness was the paralytics and is our greatest need. Having restored him spiritually, Jesus then restored him physically by healing him. How is this forgiveness possible? It's possible and indeed available to all because of his sacrifice and punishment in our place on the cross. Verse 17 of chapter 8 in Matthew's Gospel quotes Isaiah saying, He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. And the following verse in Isaiah says, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah was looking forward to the Lord's restorative ministry and sacrifice resulting in our justification before his throne of grace. Surely this must encourage our commitment to him and to his sovereign rule. Matthew goes on to describe Jesus' compassion and strategy faced with a world in desperate need. Sending out the disciples, he emphasises the importance of prayer, the reality of opposition and the need for courage, all of which are still relevant to us today. Later in his Gospel, Matthew gives us a glimpse of Jesus' glory on the Mount of the Transfiguration, which is similar to John's vision in Revelation chapter 1, where Jesus' face shone like the sun in all its brilliance. What a privilege for Peter, James and John to be taken up the mountain with Jesus to witness the Lord in all his glory. Such an intensity of radiance would have made it difficult for them to even look at him. This is our God. Our God who created the universe, whose kingdom is coming, who is restoring all things, who died on a cross and rose again. How big, how glorious is our Jesus. How big, how glorious is your personal Jesus. In the words of the old Sunday school song, will you be wise and build your house upon the rock by putting his words into practice. A closing prayer. Lord, lift our eyes and our hearts and give us a glimpse of your glory, inspiring us to share the good news of your kingdom by putting your words into practice. Amen. <laughs>